Over the weekend, I played The Quarry, and what I mean by I played it in the weekend, I mean I sat down for 10 hours and played the entire game in one sitting. I was so captivated by the story and all the decisions I could make, and to me, The Quarry was absolutely a worthy successor to Until Dawn. But naturally, people are going to compare the two games and pick one over the other, so in this video I'm going to go over both games and compare the stories, characters, and give my thoughts on both games and which I prefer. But first, if you're new around here, I'm the Thrifty Titan typewriter and I make all kinds of videos on all things mystery, fantasy, and sci-fi, so if those are things that interest you, consider browsing my channel and joining the Discord for some fun conversations. Be on the lookout for two new videos every week, and let's get on with the video. Going forward, I'm going to be delving into spoilers for both Until Dawn and The Quarry, so you've been warned, here we go. For those that don't know and don't care about spoilers, until Dawn and The Quarry are two horror games that were developed by Supermassive Games, who are quickly becoming one of my favorite developers. The games consist of really classic horror tropes, a group of teens in the secluded wilderness somewhere, but the catch is that you get to control what each of the character does, so it's up to you whether or not to kill them or keep them alive if you can. Almost everyone who watches horror movies can agree that a lot of the characters are really stupid. You hear a noise in the creepy old basement in the cabin in the woods. Most sane people would say don't go down there, but the characters always do. In these games, you hear a creepy noise in the creepy basement, you don't have to go down there. These games take the trope of teens secluded in the wilderness, but twist it so that it's not a trope anymore because you get to decide what is right for each character. You can play it safe and try to keep every character alive by choosing the best possible outcome, or try to kill everyone if you want to, or you can do what I do and choose the option that you think best represents each character. And that's what makes these games so great, is that everyone who plays it is probably going to have some differing choices and paths they took to get to the ending they receive. Almost every playthrough is different for every person. In both Until Dawn and The Quarry, I managed to keep almost everyone alive right up to the last minute, and then I made a wrong decision and got almost everyone killed. I'm gonna have to remember that for Supermassive's next game so I don't spend 10 hours playing a game trying my hardest to keep everyone alive just to make the wrong decision and be in a terrible mood because I killed everyone. The stories themselves are actually quite similar, and let me explain why. Both stories center on a group of kids away in the secluded wilderness, until dawn on a snowy mountain, the quarry at a summer camp. Both have a supernatural presence hunting them that will kill them if you're not careful, and a hunter or hunters that are scary looking but actually are trying to help you. At the end, you have to try and end the curse, and depending on your playstyle, you'll either break the curse or kill a lot of your characters. While some of the elements of the story are the same, the plots themselves can be very different from one another. I mentioned that there's hunters in the quarry that are there to help you. That can be true, or it can be false depending on your decisions made in the game. I've been seeing some things online that seem spoilery to me about the game, but I I've played the game in its entirety, it's just that there's so many branching paths everyone can take that the spoilers I've seen online seem insane to me because my playthrough was just so different. I remember a lot of people talking a while ago about if Until Dawn and The Quarry are connected in the same universe or not. Now, there's really no reason for these games to be connected, and they might not be at all. It's just that nowadays people are obsessed with trying to connect universes together, and if I'm being honest, I'm definitely one of those people. Supermassive Games hasn't said anything about these games being connected other than that The Quarry is the spiritual successor to Until Dawn, and that makes plenty of sense because these games look and feel very similar to one another, but there's really no word on any connection between the two games. And believe me, I looked all around for some mention of Sam, Mike, Josh, or really anyone, or any mention of campers in a lodge that had to be evacuated, but there was nothing. No newspaper article or letter or or anything, and I was looking harder for that than I was for these damn tarot cards. The only slight hint towards these games having a connection is more of a fourth wall break than anything when Caitlin is talking to Dylan, and she says that the main building reminds her of a ski lodge, and then she goes on about being stranded at a ski lodge with no one but each other, and that's a pretty on-the-nose reference to Until Dawn, but she wasn't saying that she heard a story about that happening, she was just painting a picture. So it's really just super massive games making a joke about their previous game more than anything. It would be very difficult to reference the characters or events in the previous game because there's obviously so many different endings in Until Dawn. If there was a newspaper clipping in the game that referenced the events of Until Dawn, 
what would it even say? Would it say that there were no survivors, or would it say that there were seven survivors? I think Supermassive wanted every player's personal playthrough to be their own definition of what's canon or not, so referencing the events of Until Dawn would be almost impossible. Maybe during their conversation, Caitlin could have said something like, I've heard of a story of kids trapped in a ski lodge overnight, and I never thought that that would happen to me, and Dylan could have asked, did any of them make it? And she could have said, I don't know, I never read the article. Something along those lines would have been their only chance of referencing Until Dawn, but I can see why they left it out. If these games are connected in some way, it's not made known to us during the time I'm making this video. If there's ever confirmation or more information, then maybe I'll update this video or post a new one, but right now, this slight nod towards Until Dawn is all we have. But the question everyone wants to know the answer to is which game is better? Well, to me, the margins are razor thin. I had never played a game like Until Dawn before. To me, it seemed like a generic horror game until I actually played it and realized it was anything but a generic horror game. I loved playing as each character and crafting each individual character arc, particularly Mike, who was an asshole in the beginning of the game, who turned into a selfless hero by the end, but that was just my playthrough. The Wendigos were terrifying, and the story of Josh doing all this to get revenge for what they did to his sisters the previous year was a great twist. In The Quarry, I found Laura and Max to be really likable right away. It took me a bit of time to warm up to the others, but eventually I did, particularly Nick, Dylan, London Tipton, and Abigail, and the others I didn't really care too much about, but when we got to the flashback sequences between Laura and Max, I became so invested in the game and from there on out, I couldn't put it down. I absolutely adore the designs of the werewolves in this game. I have a slight obsession with werewolves, but I hate ones that just look like big dogs. I've always said that Professor Lupin in Harry Potter was the coolest looking werewolf, but the quarry werewolves might have taken that top spot. I could be wrong, but I think there's even more branching decisions in this game than there was in Until Dawn, and I can't wait for my third, fourth, and fifth playthroughs of this game to see all the decisions I can make that I didn't in my first and second playthroughs. There were questions that I never got to see the answer to, like who is the guy at the bottom of the lake? I chose not to dive in after the part, so I never got the answer to that but on my next playthrough, you bet your ass I'm diving right in that lake. So which game is better overall? Right now, I'm gonna have to say The Quarry, and maybe it's because I'm biased for my love of werewolves and because it just came out so it's so fresh in my mind, but that's what my gut's telling me. Is Until Dawn a bad game? Absolutely not. If I were giving Until Dawn a 9, then The Quarry gets a 9.1. And depending on the day of the week, those decisions could change. Now this might be a bit premature, but I'm going to speculate on what Supermassive's next game could be. Maybe they'll do some more stuff like the Dark Pictures Anthology first, but their next massive game, pun intended, has to be some sort of supernatural creature hunting a group of kids in the wilderness over the course of one night. What could the creature be? Maybe a vampire, or zombies, or my personal favorite, Bigfoot. A group of teens could be on a road trip when they stop in the woods at an old cabin, and then they get hunted by Bigfoot. Or perhaps the next game will break this mold entirely and have a group of friends on a cruise when they run into mermaids or the Kraken or something like that. Whatever the game is, I'll be playing it, because both Until Dawn and The Quarry have cemented themselves as some of my favorite games of all time. What are your thoughts on The Quarry and Until Dawn? Let me know which one you prefer in the comments below. Give this video a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more things fantasy, mystery, and sci-fi. If you do, then I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.